The ancient Egyptian civilization has been blessed with a vast long history, and it seems archaeologists always manage to kick over a stone and find something new out there. When it comes to archaeological discoveries, it holds a massive trove of history, including many incredible and mysterious disclosures. Earlier this year, an Egyptian-German archaeological mission shared a new discovery of two colossal limestone statues that depict an ancient pharaoh in the form of a sphinx. Attracting the cameras of the world, this finding at the site of the Lost Temple of Luxor showed the light of the day to artifacts that had remained hidden for hundreds of years. Welcome to Crunch, and today we will know about the pair of giant sphinxes that archaeologists discovered at the Lost Temple of a Million Years. Unearthing Egypt's Greatest Temple A recent restoration project by the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities and the German Archaeological Institute unearthed fragments of a pair of giant limestone sphinxes in the ancient capital of Thebes, modern-day Luxor. They were half-submerged in the water at the mortuary temple of King Amenhotep III. Amongst ancient Egyptians, this mortuary was recognized as the temple of millions of years. The finding of the sphinxes happens to be the result of a decades-long effort to restore this temple. These sphinxes, which measure around 26 feet long, are outfitted wearing a mongoose-shaped headdress, a royal beard, and a broad necklace that likely depicts the ancient ruler. During the cleaning and restoration process of the statues, the head of the archaeological mission Purik Sarauzian and her colleagues came across an inscription on the Sphinx's chest that reads, The Beloved of the God Amun-Ra, which is the royal name for Amenhotep III. Ici, nous sommes dans le temple d'Amenophis III. C'est le temple funéraire d'un roi qui a vécu dans la première moitié du XIVe siècle avant Jésus-Christ. Et c'est l'époque où l'Égypte est au sommet de sa gloire, de son expansion et de son pouvoir. The precise meaning of the Sphinx is not quite confirmed, although there are many interpretations of what this iconic mythical beast symbolized. Some have interpreted them as symbols of how the powerful royal dynasties of ancient Egypt were inseparable from the divine. Okay, that's one possibility, or perhaps they just really wanted to confuse some archaeologists in 3,300 years' time. Pendant son règne de quelques 39 ans, euh, ce roi a construit ici, dans la région Thébaine, le plus grand des temples jamais vus, qui va, euh, si vous comptez, des colosses de Memnon jusqu'au bout du temple, là où la, la route moderne tourne devant l'inspectorat, ça fait 700 mètres. The Temple of Millions of Years Pharaoh Amenhotep III's legacy was recognized in a mortuary temple made for rituals and infinite offerings to honor the pharaoh after his passing. If you could ever time travel back to this golden Egyptian era, this jaw-dropping sight wouldn't fail to mesmerize you, as Amenhotep III was not much into building small structures. The temple itself was gigantic and was envied by other pharaohs. The temple of Karnak was also being built during this time, but was relatively smaller. The mortuary temple was constructed on the east bank of the Nile River, not far from the Valley of the Kings and Amenhotep's III royal tomb. It was considered the grandest of all mortuary temple complexes built in Egypt. The sprawling 35-hectare complex stood along the Nile River. It included three massive mud-brick pylons aligned on a single axis and a long connecting corridor leading to an immense open solar courtyard, a roofed hall, and sanctuary and sacred altar. At the entrance to this complex of funerary structures, the Colossi of Memnon stood tall, depicting the Lord himself in a seated position with his hands resting on his knees and his gaze facing towards the river. Even today, these guardians stand tall at the entrance that once led to the Sun Court, despite the fact that they have endured many earthquakes. Unfortunately, the Temple of Millions of Years lasted less than a century. After a major earthquake dated around 1200 BC, the mortuary temple of Amenhotep III was destroyed. Roman authorities decided to come in and reconstruct some of it, only for it to be hit by another earthquake in 27 BC that destroyed the temple for the second time. Having been built too close to the Nile River, the mortuary temple of Amenhotep III was severely damaged over centuries. Water from the Nile repeatedly inundated the structure, destroying the architecture and precious statues. The earthquake, as mentioned before, obviously had damaged the temple. Also, pieces of the structure were stolen and used for other temples. To top it all off, the structure has been engulfed in fires, vandalized, and even robbed. The Pharaoh's Opulent Reign Amenhotep III, also known as Amenhotep the Magnificent, 
happens to be the ninth king in Egypt's 18th dynasty, who ruled Egypt for 38 years with his queen, Tayyi, until his death. He was quite a tycoon of his time. As he matured, Amenhotep III mastered the art of diplomacy. He was renowned for placing other countries in Egypt's debt through lavish gifts, including gold. His reputation for generosity established rulers, and he enjoyed productive relationships with Egypt's surrounding states. During his subsequent reign, he largely continued his father's policies. Amenhotep III had the privilege of inheriting the rule of Egypt at its peak. Not to mention, he oversaw a peaceful period of prosperity because of the work of his great-grandfather, Thutmose III. Thutmose III ruled for a period of nearly 54 years, with so many military campaigns during his reign that he is often referred to as the Napoleon of Egypt. His ambition shaped Egypt in the years to come. Through his cunning military operations, Egypt secured territory in Nubia, Mitanni, Syria, and Turkey, among other places. While other pharaohs boasted of great military prowess, Thutmose III's accomplishments were easy to observe in Egypt's wealthy and growing empire. The accomplishments of Amenhotep III are often overlooked among 18th dynasty Egyptian pharaohs. He didn't conquer new territories like his grandfather, nor did he begin heretical reforms like his son. He also never left behind a king's ransom of riches like his grandson. Instead, his peaceful reign helped secure Egypt's position in the ancient world. Art became more important than ever, while culture and religion reformed and flourished under his guiding hand. Many of his building projects, such as the Temple at Luxor and the Colossi of Memnon, are representative of ancient Egypt as a whole. He marked his reign by initiating a major new construction program throughout Egypt. End of an Era Amenhotep's death was the beginning of the end for one of the most successful and dramatic dynasties in Egyptian history. Scientists believe that Egypt lost Amenhotep III from arthritis at somewhere between 40 and 50 years of age. A forensic examination of his mummy shows that he was probably in constant pain during his final years owing to his worn and cavity-pitted teeth. He was buried in the Valley of the Kings in tomb WV-22. The tomb is the largest in the West Valley of the Kings and includes two side chambers for his great royal wives, Tiri and Situman. However, it does not seem either he was buried there. Sometime during the Third Intermediate Period, his mummy was moved from this tomb and was placed in a side chamber of KV-35, along with several other pharaohs of the 18th and 19th dynasties, where it lay until it was discovered by Victor Lorette, French Egyptologist in 1898. The Grand Legacy Undeniably, Amenhotep III's most enduring legacy was the flowering of Egyptian artistic and architectural achievement during his reign. This highly sophisticated and refined taste in art and architecture permeated through all parts of Egyptian society. It manifested itself in the tombs of prominent state functionaries, such as Ahamhet and Remos. His reign left behind some of ancient Egypt's most beautiful monuments. Amenhotep rightly deserves the title The Magnificent. The Mortuary Temple of Amenhotep III will remain to be the grandest temple in Thebes. As it continues to grow, archaeologists and Egyptologists are learning more and more about the pharaoh and his visions for his temple. Not only are the bigger artifacts being studied, but smaller artifacts like pottery are being examined and revealing the past as well. King Amenhotep III had a mission, and it is saddening that it was completely destroyed with natural disasters and looters. He was a king that was praised by many, and onlookers should be glad that Sarausian and the many other archaeologists understand this and want to restore the temple to its former glory. In a few years, it will be incredible to travel to Luxor and appreciate Amenhotep's vision of the temple, the work of the ancient Egyptians, and the current archaeologists who are bringing it back to life. Leave us a comment on whether you would like to witness this long-lost temple yourself. As always, thanks for watching and supporting our channel. Make sure you subscribe for more amazing Crunch History content.